That is funny. <laughs> okay, those are the jokes, people. They're over. Um, <laughs> So we're going to present together today, this is a cooperative project that the BLM and state have done, and actually it also involves Mountain Studies Institute doing some treatment tests for us. And um, so we're going to go over this site where we believe we've tested some innovative stuff. We're going to focus on the, uh, the, the treatment vault itself and talk about how it's configured, and then Lisa's going to um, talk about maybe how we could use it in the future. got a, a pretty well-developed access to it um, off of the Prospect Road. And so it's it's almost two-wheel drive, you could say, from here. Um, and there's some decent staging right here at the bottom of Dry Gulch, as well as um, just a little bit of staging along the road, the road that we've developed up, um, which we hope to improve this year. Um, it, Typically, this charges about uh, four to eight gallons a minute. So this was a project that we did under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Uh, that was fun. It was picked as a project mostly because it fit the dollar amount that was necessary that was left over. And so this project was identified. This site is near the top 30 for the ARSG's use attainability analysis um, mine drainages, and we moved forward on the project. It's designed to treat eight gallons a minute, and it has water that's high in aluminum, cadmium, copper, iron, zinc, and has a lower pH. The flow does vary, and every once in a while, we have a burp at the site, and we do get a flush that comes out, and at least is the only one that's seen it. Oh, I thought you had seen it. Oh, okay. We thought we think once in a while it flushes out a little bit with some um, iron hydroxides. It was constructed in 2010. It's modeled after a, a pit toilet for like a forest service campground, except it has extra chambers. And so it it actually fits it fit together in three precast pieces, and then is uh, glued together with this black asphalt type stuff in between the layers. And here it is going in. We're going to go over the pipe system, but here's a view of the pipes in the treatment chamber. Here's what it looks like today sitting on the side of the hill. We painted it to blend in um, with, with um, Natina, which makes it weather and look more like rocks. So you can't see it as much. We're glad about that. Does have a lid on it? It's very yeah, it's very heavy. We might need to redesign the lid and make it a little lighter so that people can get it off easier. But the let's see. Yeah. The top button. Okay, here we go. So it has the flow comes out of the attic here and goes into the, oh no. The flow comes out of the attic here and goes into the sediment chamber, which is um, three by six. 
And it's just a holding chamber before it goes into the treatment vault and drops out a little bit of iron. And then we have the main treatment chamber, which is seven by six, holds about four to five feet of height of material. So seven by six by five feet of material. So not a lot of space, but it was designed for certain medias identified by the BLM. And then we have a discharge chamber. So the site is designed to allow flow into the, let me make sure I have this right, into the sediment chamber. And we can have flow that goes down, down to the bottom and up through the pipes and then out the top. Or we also have plumbing that can change and we can go in through the top with the water down and out through the bottom. So we made it so you could do upflow or downflow. Here's just a cross section. The, the pipes that are currently in it are slotted. We're not sure if they're currently clogged or not, but we'll talk about that later. But they have slots all along them and they have stand pipes to be cleaned out. There's a picture of the stand. Here's what the stand pipes look like. So you can snake them out if you need to. So in 2011, we tested zero valent iron and sand. And this was um, a mixture identified by Carl Ford of the BLM. And he identified two different things that this treatment vault could be used for, zero valent iron and boxol. So in 2011, we chose zero valent iron. The reason we chose that first was because it's available in the United States um, in, I think we got it out of maybe Michigan, which is not really close. But um, it comes out of the iron industry, and um, so we got it from there. It's kind of what it looks like. It's just a little powder of uh, little iron particles. This is a, I chose this cartoon over other ones on the internet because it was um, simpler. A lot of them had so much going on, but what you have going on is basically some of the zinc is adsorbed and some is precipitated. So this is same for arsenic, cadmium, the other metals. And um, we mixed about 12 and a half percent iron with uh, the rest remaining sand. Oh, so, so, that one, so this test did not work because it cemented up. Um, it became as hard as a rock and uh, no flow passed through it. So we made ferrocrete in less than a year, uh, which was not helpful. So <laughs> it was hard to get out, and we had, I believe we even rented like a jackhammer or something to get, get the remaining, get it out of the vault so we could put something new in. So in 2012, we tested boxol. Boxol is aluminum refining red mud. So when you, from the aluminum refining process. And we had to purchase it from, and no laughs, we didn't have it available here in the hoops we had to go through to get it in the United States. We're too big and they wanted us to sign liability waivers and all sorts of stuff. We had to buy it from Australia. But we, we decided to do it anyways, to test it, to see if we did want to use the, local, the, the US waste streams in the future. It's a fine grain powder, and usually it's used to treat tailings ponds and waste piles. So we were using it in, in kind of a different application. This is just a picture of what aluminum refining looks like, and that's the red mud all over the site. So there's plenty of it to be had. So in tw so 2012, instead of just filling the box right away again, we actually, um, tested different things, different, um, different mixtures of the red mud with different things. And we chose biochar, which is wood burnt in a low oxygen environment. We chose porous concrete, concrete which has a bunch of pore space and it, it's connected. And we impregnated that with the red mud. So it's just like adding a little bit of red mud to the mix. And then we mixed it with pea gravel. And we did column tests. 
we tested it in, in different columns and mixed it and ran it for, I can't remember right now, maybe a month. And MSI worked on this, this part. They were, this is where MSI comes in. And what we ended up doing is picking the 3070 mix of the boxol and biochar. And we filled, filled the tank. And since then, the tank has clogged again, and the uh, biochar and boxol have separated, and we're, the pipes are clogged, and we have preferential flow paths going through the, through the media. So this is where we move forward. You know, we haven't done anything with the box in a long time, and this is where BLM is going to move it forward and offer some stuff up. So when Kirsten and, and my former boss, Kay Zillick, um, decided to try this idea, I thought they were nuts because, um, I don't, does this go back to the first slides? Oh. Or I have to reverse. Um, when they first started this idea, there was just this tiny little trail <laughs> that you wouldn't even see on a map. But now the the four-wheel drive road up there and um and we had a couple of uh a couple of pvc pipes up there doing some random little tests on that kept kept solidifying and i just thought kirsten and Kay were nuts to try this idea and now i'm just so glad you did and uh in a post gold king world i'm i'm just think gosh they were ahead of their time so um yeah anyway uh we want to invite vendors to think about using this box um, and uh, we are going to clean it out this fall we're going to improve the access and we're possibly willing to pay for materials so um, we've got current data from uh, I believe July um, the data brackets the site um, as from the edit so I'd be happy to share that with anyone we won't I won't bring it up on the screen right now um, and uh, if there's anybody out there with, that would like to go visit the site um, see what you see what you might be getting into if you're thinking maybe you would like to modify the box bypass the box um, we're open to we're open to ideas um, also we're really open to helping you have access to uh, our other sites and for your testing. Our problem, of course, is funding. Uh, we, we're not in a position to fund you, but we, we are very open to trying to um, move forward with these innovative technologies and use them on our sites and um, get some history behind us. So uh, feel free to catch me um, and I'll fill you in on the site any, any more that you need. Um, any questions? Yes. Yes, well, yeah, I think that would be our main objective. Um, we're open to objectives too, I think. Kirsten? Yeah, aluminum, cadmium, copper, zinc, iron, yeah. All of them, basically, just your usual, your usual guys. Yeah. Yeah, it did settle out a little bit. You know, it doesn't get a lot of flow. So there's some iron, a little bit of iron precipitating out. Not much. You saw the pH was around three and a half. So it's right at that limit. No, it's not full. No. Dennis? Green sand? No. I'm not sure what green sand is. But we should all look that up now and see. 
Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So your idea is kind of add zero valent iron to the concrete. Yeah, yeah. There's not a catch pond, but it does run over some limestone. You ready to start? Okay. We have our first taker. He's first in line. So the question is, can we back flush the system? And I don't know the answer. We designed it to snake it. That's all I can say. So I'd have to understand exactly how that would work. Marty? Well, the residence time is gonna, um, we, have, we have that information in the design. It did have a residence time and we could get that to people. Scott. <laughs> Thanks for that question, Scott. <laughs> Well, it all comes down to land status, and uh, this was all this was on BLM, and we could do it there. And there were actually some unpatented claims at the time. I'm not sure if they're still there, but there was a lot of land issues going on around there. We might be going over now. Are we over? But, okay. Um, land, okay. Land ownership is just such a, a huge um, decision maker for how we move forward on on any test. So just always keep that in mind. That, and that's why the Evelyn is so attractive. One of the reasons. Thanks. Thank you.